How's it going YouTube? And welcome to another video featuring this T-Rex arms hat, but also this time, my cat. Maybe not the cat, he kept meowing and biting my fingers. Anyway, there's a lot of confusion surrounding the law when it comes to airsoft, as well as confusion and misinformation when it comes to Yukara as well in the UK. I'm gonna do my best to keep this video as concise as possible, but also give you all the information that you need so you can avoid the confusion and make sure that you're on the right track. Before we get into the video, I've noticed that only 12.5% of the people watching my videos are actually subscribed. So, friendly reminder, don't forget, if you're new to the channel or if you've been here before, head down below, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified next time I upload a new video. Now, as I said at the beginning, there is a lot of confusion surrounding the law and Yukara, and I mean a lot. What we'll do, we'll start at the beginning and go through the law. Now, I've taken this directly from the Crown Prosecution Service website, and I've left a link to this down in the description below, so you can go through and have a read of it yourself. But essentially, from the 1st of October 2007, Section 36 of the Violent Crime Reduction Act 2006 created an offence to manufacture, import, cause to be imported or sell a realistic imitation firearm, so something like this, and also to modify an imitation firearm so that it becomes a realistic imitation firearm. Now an imitation firearm is the two-tone gun that you'd have seen so much of. So anything, something like this, as long as it's painted at least 51% in a bright color, that's an imitation firearm, and you can buy that as long as you're over the age of 18. To buy a realistic imitation firearm, however, you're gonna need a valid defense. Now, when the VCRA was originally introduced, there was no defense provided for airsoft skirmishes when it comes to the sale, import, or manufacture of realistic imitation firearms. That's where the VCRA Realistic Imitation Firearms Regulations 2007 come in. So those regulations provided two extra defences on top of the ones that were originally provided in the VCRA 2006. So the original ones didn't cover airsoft skirmishing. These ones in the Realistic Imitation Firearms regulations did. So the first defence that was provided in the regulations from 2007 is that you will have a defence against being prosecuted for an offence under Section 36 of the VCRA if it was for the organization or holding of an airsoft skirmish as long as public liability insurance was held it for that skirmish or in relation to that skirmish. The second defense is for the display at an arms fair or something like that so it doesn't actually apply to airsoft. So that's the legislation covered. And we know that if you've got a defense, then you're perfectly fine to sell, manufacture, import a realistic imitation firearm or modify an imitation firearm so that it becomes a realistic imitation firearm. But how do you prove that defense? Now, keep in mind that the people being prosecuted here won't be the person buying the imitation or the realistic imitation firearm. There's no law against buying them, owning them, or gifting them to someone else. The laws apply to the sale, import, and manufacture. So the people being prosecuted here are the retailers and the importers. So how do you prove to them that you do have a valid defense and that they're going to be safe if they sell you a realistic imitation firearm? So that's where UCARA comes in, or the UK Airsoft Retailers Association. Now, technically speaking, that's not exactly where UCARA came in. They came in when the original legislation was announced and there was no defense there for airsoft skirmishing. It was gonna absolutely bury every airsoft retailer in the UK and probably kill the sport as well. So Yukara put together a proposal and did a bit of lobbying that they could maintain a database of players who are known to have a valid defense or are known to be active airsoft skirmishers, the airsoft retailers would be able to access, thereby confirming that their customer has a valid defense and that they're perfectly safe to sell them that realistic imitation firearm. Now, I wanna be clear here, a Yukara registration is not a license. 
There's no license for airsoft guns in the UK at whatsoever. So to get your Yukara registration as a player, what you need to do is play three games at the same airsoft site, or I believe a site from the same organizer, so people like your Rift and First and Only, in no less than 56 days or four weeks. Once you've done that, the site will be able to register you as a player. You'll get a unique Yukara registration number or Yukara player registration number that you can then give to retailers when you want to purchase a realistic imitation firearm. Retailers can then look up that number, confirm the postcode against the one that you've put in there for shipping. And if everything matches up, you'll be able to buy your realistic imitation firearm. They'll ship it out to you and it's happy days for everyone. You don't actually need a Yukara registration to buy a realistic imitation firearm. All you need is to be able to prove that you are an active airsoft skirmisher. So site membership, photos, videos, anything you can do to prove you're an active airsoft skirmisher technically is enough to prove that you've got the valid defense or the retailer has the valid defense for selling you that realistic imitation firearm. A Yukara registration though is the easiest way to do it because it's just one number that you can give to them. They can look it up in a database, confirm it's all correct, and it's as easy as that. I should note as well that Yukara doesn't actually cost you, the player, anything. All you've got to do is attend those first three games. So once you've got your realistic imitation firearm, are there any other laws that apply to it? Well, other than the obvious ones, like don't go brandishing it in the street because it's gonna be treated as a real firearm, you're gonna cause concern, it could even end up as bad as armed response coming out and shooting you with their real guns. That's the obvious one, don't worry about that one. The other one that you wanna look at is the Policing and Crime Act of 2017. Now, what this did for, I believe the first time, was set out some limits for the power of an airsoft gun. Now, I might be paraphrasing here, but the Firearms Act defines a firearm as any barreled weapon capable of expelling a projectile with a force of at least one joule. Now, most of our airsoft guns in the UK do shoot more than one joule. So according to the Firearms Act, they are actually firearms and not realistic imitation firearms. Now, the Policing and Crime Act of 2017, however, provides an exception to the Firearms Act, or the original wording of the Firearms Act, specifically for airsoft guns. So anything full auto capable, your limit there is gonna be 1.3 joules or about 370 FPS. Most sites limits for these are gonna be about 350 FPS, because it gives you a bit of a buffer zone, so you're not encroaching on that hard legal limit, and also for site owner's own policies and insurance purposes and safety as well. When it comes to semi-automatic and bolt action rifles, the limit on those is two and a half joules or about 520 FPS. Again, most sites are gonna have that limit at around 500 FPS for your bolt actions to give you that 20 FPS buffer. And generally for DMRs, you'll be around 400 to 450 FPS. DMRs being semi-auto only, and you'll have a minimum engagement distance on that as well that I'll go through in a moment. Now, if you go over these limits with your guns, depending on whether it's the 1.3 joule limit or the two and a half joule limit, there are very different consequences. So we'll start with the two and a half joule. If you go over that with a semi-automatic only or not fully auto capable gun or a bolt action rifle, and you go over that 2.5 joules, that gun is now considered an air gun. So an air rifle or an air pistol. Now, you know, you're not gonna be prosecuted for owning one of those. If you're over the age of 18, you can buy one. However, if you're over that legal limit and you take it to an airsoft skirmish and shoot someone with it, you're no longer shooting them with an airsoft gun. You're shooting them with an air rifle. And that could be considered assault with a deadly weapon because they are considered to be lethal barreled firearms. If you go over that 1.3 joule limit though, with a fully automatic capable gun, it's a completely different ball game. So once you go over that 1.3 joules, it's now considered a lethal barreled firearm. It is a firearm under the Firearms Act, 
And because it's fully automatic capable, it's also a Section 5 firearm. And there are serious, serious consequences for owning something like that without the relevant license. And getting a license for a Section 5 firearm is extremely, extremely rare. All right, on to MED or minimum engagement distances. So most sites in the UK, in fact, probably all sites in the UK don't have a minimum engagement distance or an overall MED. The rule in the UK is pretty much don't be a dick. We don't have the bang bang rule like you do in the US or parlays or anything like that that can confuse things. If you get the drop on someone, just don't be a dick. Don't shoot them full auto in the back. Don't shoot them in the back of the head. Shoot them in the plate carrier or something like that. You can offer a bang bang out of mercy, but if they turn around and shoot you, you're dead because that bang rule doesn't exist. When it comes to your DMRs, so your semi-automatic only weapons, whether it be gas, HPA, or AEG, your limit's gonna be anywhere from 400 to 450 FPS. Depends on the site that you're playing at, their insurance policies, and the owner's own policies as well. Now, your MED for those weapons, you're gonna be anywhere between 20 and 30 meters. I believe most sites in the UK operate with a 30 meter minimum engagement distance, but I have played at some that have a, as low as 20 meters. I can't say that I've ever played at a site with an MED lower than 20 meters though. For your bolt action sniper rifles, that MED is gonna be the same. So for most sites, it'll be around the 30 meter mark, but again, some of them will be as low as 20 meters. And your FPS limit on those at most sites is gonna be 500 FPS, and it won't be going any higher than that. Again, because you're approaching that hard legal limit. Now, in my opinion, the reason you can have a higher FPS limit for your bolt action snipers compared to the DMRs, even with the same MED and the same legal limits, because it's a lot slower to take a follow-up shot with a bolt action sniper rifle than it is with a semi-automatic DMR. All right, on to pyro. Now, I'm not 100% across the law when it comes to pyro, so I'll just go through some real simple stuff. And if you want to read any further into it, I've left a link to an article from Defcon Airsoft in the description below that covers it in great detail, and it is a fantastic read. The basics are you're gonna to have to be at least 18 years old to buy any pyrotechnics. And they include things like your smoke grenades, Mark V thunder flashes, um, and shrapnel grenades like your TAG AFG6 or Enola Gate EG67. Most sites that allow bangs are gonna allow up to a Mark V, and that's gonna be 130 decibels at one inch. They're not gonna have decibel meters on site. Generally, they'll have a list of brands that are approved or particular pyro that's approved, and if your pyro isn't on that list, you're not gonna be using it. Other sites do go a bit higher, and they'll let you use something up to, say, a Mark IX. Now, Mark 9s, they'll be in excess of 145 decibels. They create a much louder bang, a brighter flash, and the sound pressure that comes off those is much greater. So those sites that do allow them, a lot of them will only allow them outdoors rather than being indoors, because people who don't have any hearing protection on can suffer real serious hearing damage from the Mark 9s going off indoors as a result of the pressure from them. And just a little note for the end, once you've got your realistic imitation firearms or even your imitation firearms, or pyro or anything, anything airsoft related, anything that looks like it could cause harm or fear, just make sure you're transporting it responsibly. Don't go rocking up to site in your full kit with your plate carrier on and your belt with a holster on the side, even if you've got your guns in a case or a bag. Keep it all tucked away, out of sight, out of mind. Don't go frightening the locals or anything like that. It's just a bit of common courtesy. You know, they don't know what you're doing. They might have no idea what airsoft is. And then they just see this guy walking down the street in camo with a plate carrier on. They might start freaking out. So just have a bit of courtesy and, and keep that in mind. Finally, a reminder again, 
don't forget to go down below, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified next time I upload a new video. It is greatly appreciated and it spurs me on a little bit to keep the channel going and put more videos together like this one. Finally, I've put links in the description. I think I've mentioned it already, but I've put links in the description to a heap of useful articles, legislation, and additional information that you can go through and have a read through yourself, get across the law a little bit better, or even try and corroborate what I've said. If you've got anything else you'd wanna add, anything that you think I might've missed, leave it in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time. No, stop biting my fingers. Stop it.